Hi guys and welcome to 123MyT's video where we take a look at the brand new 6th generation iPad. So the main upgrade of the 6th gen over the 5th gen is a CPU upgrade so it comes with the A10 Fusion chip. It now also comes with Apple Pencil support and this is the first time that it's been available on the budget iPad. So if you're looking to buy one of the budget iPads it comes in three different colours silver, gold and space grey. And it comes with two different storage options. So it's 32 gigabytes, and that retails for 329 USD. And there's 128 gigabytes, and that retails for 429 USD. If you select 32 gigabyte storage, you also have the option of Wi-Fi only for 329, or you can select the Wi-Fi Plus cellular for 459 dollars. Okay, guys. So let's turn the box over and get to the unboxing see what we've got inside okay let's just go ahead and lift the lid and the first thing you'll be greeted with is the iPad with a clear plastic cover or case and we just take it out of the case like so accessories so you get your lightning USB port cable for charging the iPad. Then you also get some instructions here. So we get welcome to iPad, uh, just some simple quick tips instructions. A little bit about the warranty of the iPad and then just some Apple stickers. Next up we've got the USB charger for charging your device and as you can see it's got the Australian plug on the end which comes off so that can actually be changed if you're in the US you'll have a US one uh, but you can actually change this out for the different countries around the world if you're traveling on the outside the sixth generation iPad is really identical to the fifth generation iPad so there's no real changes here to be seen so as mentioned the display is still the same so it's a 9.7 inch LCD IPS display the display is not laminated to the glass like the iPad Air 2 or the iPad Pro so you will see a slight gap between the glass and this LCD. However for the most part it's not that noticeable. The eyesight camera on the back is still the same it's an 8 megapixel camera with an f2.4 aperture and records a 1080p video at 30 frames per second. It's not a great camera now and it also struggles on low light performance. The FaceTime camera on the front is still the same as well. It's a 1.2 megapixel camera and records video at 720p at 30 frames. The Touch ID sensor has a colour matching metal ring which surrounds the sapphire glass. The sensor can be used to unlock the iPad or to make online payments. On the bottom of the iPad we've got our lightning connector and either side of that we've got our stereo speakers. The speaker quality is pretty good, the only problem is when you're handling the iPad in landscape orientation, the sound will come out lopsided. The buttons on the iPad are still the same, so we've still got our sleep-wake power button on the top of the iPad, and then down the side we've got our up and down volume buttons. And just like all iPads, we still have the headphone jack. And on the top of the iPad and at the back, you can see here we've got dual microphone pinholes. So one of the upgrades for the iPad 6th generation is the inclusion of the Apple A10 Fusion CPU. So it'll make the iPad a little bit zippier. And for those that are interested uh, in the Geekbench scores, here they are here. So the single core score was 3502 and the multi-core score was 5937. So the battery is a 32.4 watt hour battery and according to Apple you should get around 10 hours of battery life when using the iPad. So even though the iPad doesn't come with an Apple Pencil, it does actually support it. So you will be able to use all the Apple Pencil features with this lower price point iPad. And it works exactly the same. So to pair the devices, just remove the lid and plug it into the bottom of your iPad. And once you've got it plugged in there, you should get a pairing request come up. You just simply press pair, and you can also charge the iPad Pencil via the iPad. So the Apple Pencil works the same on the iPad as it does on the iPad Pro. So it has pressure sensitivity as well as angled sensitivity. And this gives you very precise and natural control of the pencil.
One drawback to the pencil though, you'll find it's not really designed to be a navigation tool. So you can kind of swipe around a little bit, it does things, the sensitivity isn't that great. So you'll find the function a little bit limited uh, when you're on your iPad itself. And you more than likely you'll need certain types of apps to use the pen uh, to its full potential. So in terms of using the iPad, you can press the home button to open up the iPad. If you swipe down, you'll get to the search menu. If you go back out and then swipe down from the top of the iPad, you'll get your notifications menu. If you swipe across, you'll get your widgets menu, which has all your widgets in there. And if you scroll up from the bottom, you'll get our recent apps that we were using, plus the control center. So if you wanted to change the brightness on your screen, you can just simply hold your uh, brightness widget there and it will turn the brightness of the screen up and down. You've also got your sound so you can also do the same with your sound, turn your sound up and down. Uh, you've got your music widget and then above that you've got your Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi and up the top there you've got your aeroplane mode if you wanted to turn all your wireless applications off. Screen mirroring so if you wanted to mirror to Apple TV you could press the screen mirroring and uh, cast what you're seeing on your screen to your TV. Now if you wanted to favorite one of your apps, let's say we wanted to favorite the App Store, we can tap and hold and then simply drag it down and put it in our taskbar down the bottom there. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it from me. If this was a helpful video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.